Good evening and welcome back to Five Minute Theology. We're thinking this time about the topic of gifts, gifts in the church, what they are and how to use them. Hopefully this time I'll keep it to five minutes. So without further ado, let me start the timer and then we'll think about gifts. So spiritual gifts, spiritual gifts in the Bible, um, probably the best place to start is the parable of the talents, um, which many of you will know well, I'm sure. And in that story, a group of three servants, three slaves, is uh, they're each given gifts from the king, uh, their uh, owner who is going away to become king. And that gift is one or more talents of silver. And some of them use the talent well, and some of them use it badly. And the point of the story is very simply summing it up is that everybody is given a gift by the king and what matters is not what you get but what you do with it how well you use it whether you put it to good use or leave it and don't make use of it and the bible builds on this to say that all christians are given gifts by god through the holy spirit here's a passage from 1 corinthians 12 now to each one the manifestation of the Spirit is given for the common good. To one there is given through the Spirit a message of wisdom, to another a message of knowledge by, the same, by means of the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another gifts of healing by that one Spirit, to another miraculous powers, to another prophecy, to another distinguishing between Spirits, to another speaking in different kinds of tongues, and to still another the interpretation of tongues. What Paul's saying here is that through the Holy Spirit, God gives to everyone who is truly following Christ some gift, some ability, something they're good at, and it's given for the good of everyone, the common good, not for my personal good, but for the good of the church. That means if you are a Christian, God has given you a gift, at least one, and he's given it to you for the good of the church. So be sure you're using it, because if you're not, you're depriving the church of something God has given you to help the church become what it should be. Have a think. Do you know what your gift, do you think you know what your gifts or gifts are from God? And if you do know, are you using them? There's a long list here of gifts, and we won't go through them all uh, in this session. We might look at them in sessions to come. Paul gives a slightly different list a little bit later on, and this is aiming more at those in church leadership. But he says this, you are the body of Christ, and each one of you is a part of it, literally an organ of it. And God has placed in the church, first of all, apostles, second, prophets, third, teachers, then miracles, then gifts of healing, of helping, of management, and of different kinds of tongues. Are all apostles, are all prophets? Do all have gifts of healing? Do all speak in tongues? Do all interpret? Now eagerly desire the greater gifts. And what Paul is saying here is that the church is like a human body which needs to have lots of different organs in it to function properly. It's very important for a body to have a heart, but if the whole organ was a heart, it wouldn't have a brain or stomach or lungs and it wouldn't work. A body to function needs to have lots of different organs which are each doing their own job. The lungs mustn't try and be the toes and the toes mustn't try and be the stomach. That won't work. Each organ is to do its job as best as it can. And so Paul is saying here to those who are proud of their gifts, or seeing some gifts as better than others, no, the church needs all of you. The church needs all the gifts. And whatever gift you have, it needs you to exercise your gift in the best way possible. So, of course, not everybody has the gift of teaching. Not everybody gets to work miracles. Not everybody gets to speak in tongues. But Paul says, use your gift and eagerly desire the greater gifts. And he goes on to say that the key to what the greater gifts are is to follow the way of love um, and eagerly desire gifts of the Spirit, especially prophecy, because the one who prophesies builds up others and strengthens and equips others. So what he means by the way of love there, I think, is seek the gifts that will serve others and build them up, not the gifts that will make you look really good or important or supernatural 
or special. So in Romans, he goes on to say much the same thing. I won't read this out. Whatever your gift is, use it. Don't covet somebody else's. It might be a really impressive gift. Um, but it might be a very simple gift like serving or showing mercy. Whatever it is, use it. So let me summarise. The Bible says that God gives every Christian at least one gift, at least one thing they're really good at. It might be something very natural, like serving or looking after people, or something very supernatural, like doing miracles of healing. But it doesn't matter how impressive it looks. All that matters to God is what you do with it. So whatever your gift is, use it for the good of the church. I hope that was a helpful start on this big concept in the Bible of the gifts of the Spirit. If it's helpful, I might try in the weeks to come to work through some of those gifts and explain what they are and how to try and tell what your gift is. Because the big message that the Bible gives us to go away with is that the church will grow and flourish when everybody in it is using their gift to the best of their ability. I hope that's helpful. Do take it away, think about it, pray about it. Make sure you have an idea of what your gifts are and make sure that you're using them as best you can to build up the church. Amen.